Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the show dedicated to the craft podcast brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. I'm your host, Jeff Lozano. And on this episode, me and Lord Chandler are talking to some bad, bad ladies in the best way. Um, dedicated to pink boots. So in light of International Women's Brew Day and International Women's Day, we thought it would be cool to, to assemble um, the Pink Boots Society leader, founder, um, ex-former president, and two chapter leads so that we can talk everything about what their organization is doing for women in the fermented beverage industry. And I I have the opportunity to talk to a lot of people and I draw inspiration from all of our guests. Um, this particular episode, I drew a lot of inspiration from. So if you're an, ins uh, an aspiring woman that wants to get into the craft industry or the fermented beverage industry, please tune into this one. It's going to, it, it, you, you'll be sending out applications tomorrow. If you're a guy that's interested in joining the industry, if you're a human, you're going to pick up on some some sort of inspiration on this episode because it was it was locked and loaded, full of stories, full of awesome leaps of of, of faith and an overall mission to promote diversity and inclusion inside of the industry. We had such a great time listening to uh, Terry Ferendorf, who started the Pink Boots Society. You got to listen to her talk. You got to listen to her story. She's captivating. We sat down with Laura Ulrich from Stone, and she was the former president, and she is just a, a ball of energy and so passionate about what she's doing. Um, we sat down with Lexi Russell Martin from Duckfoot, assistant brewer over there at Duckfoot, at least for the time being. She has an, an amazing story about why she wanted to join such a great organization. Amy Spackman, who is a San Diego Pink Boots chapter co-lead, she has this energy about her that, I mean... I can't say enough about the episode. You just kind of have to tune in, crack, go grab a few beers because this one's a long one, but we couldn't cut it short. This has way too much interesting uh, material. It has great stories. And if you don't end feeling inspired, then uh, you got to re-listen to it. And I urge you to. So cheers, you guys. And thanks for tuning in. Please feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Salud. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for for deciding to jump on this uh, drink fest with uh, myself and Kobe. I am beyond honored to have you ladies on the podcast today because what you have started, what you have continued to work at, and what is evolving in the Pink Boot Society is magnificent and i think that it's worthy of way more than one episode but that's all we got today and we'll we'll have you ladies on i'm sure after this but thank you so much for jumping on the show to talk about all the work effort that you're you know it's blood sweat and tears for this kind of organization so let me introduce everybody really quick for everybody listening that doesn't know who they're looking at or who they're listening to but today we have uh terry ferendorf who is the founder Am I correct? Of the Pink Boots Society. We have yep. uh, Laura Ulrich, who is a former president, Brewer Stone. Uh, Amy Spackman, who is a San Diego uh, chapter co-lead. And then Lexi Russell Martin, who is a brewer down at Duckfoot and also a San Diego chapter co-lead. Ladies, what's up? Yeah, okay, awesome. let's, 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 before, before anything, open a beer, pour it out. If you already have it in your glass, Let's do a cheers and let's, oh. let's let's get the drinking on because that's what this is all about. Half of us yeah. are already kind of drunk. Oop. Jeff, I have, to, I have to commemorate you for saying ladies, acknowledging that you're speaking to women as opposed to guys. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It, I, I grew up with all sisters and I, uh, it's, it was checked out of me. It was, uh, it was, <laughs> noog it was noogied out of me for a long time. So, <laughs> um, but I, me and Kobe are going to take a back seat so that, so that you can talk about everything pink, pink boots, but for the sake of cadence, I thought we might start with Terry. Um, since you are the founder of this extraordinary organization, why don't you let everybody know what it is that Pink Boot Society is and trying to accomplish? Well, um, our mission is to um, 
and, I, and I'm going to get this wrong because it has evolved over time, but it's basically to uh, inspire, encourage, um, empower, educate, and a couple of other E words, um, women to advance their careers in the beer industry. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Uh, Laura, Laura knows the, the current version of that, but it's, um, you know, we're here for women in beer is how we started. However, we have, we have evolved over time and Pink Boot Society now embraces all women fermentation beverage professionals in any genre. So uh, we can talk about that expansion at some point too into cider, wine, spirits, kombucha, you know, you name it. If it's fermented and it's a beverage and you're a woman, um, you should be hanging out with us. That is, I, uh, that's all encompassing. Yeah. Uh, so Terry, let's, let's back this up though. Uh, tell the story of how it all started about how you chose to kind of create this amazing organization. How did it all begin? Okay, I could do that. Um, so um, I had been a brewmaster for 19 years in 2017. So that tells you I'm, I'm, a, I'm a happy grandma in the field, I guess. I don't know, but Pink Food Society is my baby. It's my daughter, right? And how, it, how that happened was I had quit my job after 19 years as a brewmaster, and I decided to go on this amazing road trip. I was on the road for 139 days, almost five months, and I visited, I think, 71 breweries. I brewed at 38 of them. And as I went across the country and back, I was meeting women brewers who I didn't even know existed. And they had no idea that a woman with my experience level existed either. In fact, most of the women that I met thought that they were the only woman brewer anywhere on the planet. And Laura was one of those. And she, in fact, was the very first one that I met. And we had such an amazing night having dinner at the Stone Bistro there. She bought me dinner and you know, I just felt so connected to her. And I had never really thought about the fact there weren't any other women in beer. Um, but it was clear to me that Laura was really enjoying meeting someone else in beer. And a part of me wanted to mentor her. And I, one of the questions she had was, well, how many of us are there? And I said, I don't know. I mean, I've heard of a few. I said, but I'm going on this road trip. I'll keep track. So I did keep track. And by the time I got back from this road trip, I had a list of about 60 women uh, from all over the world. Any rumors I heard, you know, Sister Doris in Germany, I have Schwester Doris. I put it on her on my list, even though I had never met her yet. I have met her since. Laura and I actually got to visit her at the same time. Um, and she's amazing. But there's all these women uh, that I had collected on this list, 60 of them. And I returned from this trip and... Um, by this point in my trip, I had loaded, I had uploaded this list onto my website. I had a website I had started, terryfarendorf.com, because during this trip, I met brewers who had more experience than I had, and they were wonderful. It was so fun because I learned a lot, but I also met brewers that had less experience than I had. And so I was telling those brewers that had less experience than I had, it was like, well, you you know, I, you really need my grain handling article from 1993. Tell you what, I'll build a website and I'll upload all the articles I've ever written. And so that's where this list ended up. And during the trip, while I was creating this list and I'm putting it into HTML and I'm going to post it up and I'm looking at this list and it said list of women brewers. And I thought, well, that's just so boring of a name. And I had named myself the road brewer because I had an identity crisis after I quit my job to take this trip. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm nobody. I used to be well, a brewmaster, but I used to be somebody. So, so I named that kind of the whole thing of the trip, though, was like you were going to go on this trip. You were going to figure out potentially places to live. You were like the whole trip yeah. was like, but it was like a that, job. It was a job. Right. right. But instead, it, it turned into manifesting this organization. Yeah. You had no idea that you were that you were spearheading something brand new. It's Laura's fault that this trip. Hey, go away. It was it was it's Laura's oh, it's fault, fault. That, 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 that the trip turned into turned into the genesis of Pink Boots Society uh, because she's the one, the first one who said. 
how many of us are there? And so that we focused the trip. It was, it was really just, I had, I wasn't ready to fall in love with another brewery after, you know, 17 years at the same brewery. And I needed just a headspace break. Um, but it turned into this, this trip where Pink Boot Society was born. And um, I got back and I said, uh, and I realized that the Craft Brewers Conference in 2008 was coming. So I called her and I said, should we try to get the women on the list together? And she said, yes. So we did have a meeting and we can, we can go on. Uh, but that's basically how Pink Boot Society was started was on this road trip. Who actually took out stock in Pink Boots? Um, <laughs> nobody that I know of. Um, at the time when I left on this trip, um, you couldn't buy like steel toe pink boots. It's still very difficult. In fact, it was very hard to find pink boots. The pink boots thing came because before I left, I was telling my husband, you know, I, all throughout my career, I have represented women because I'm, I have through a fortune or who knows what I've just ended up being there first. So I was going on this road trip and I said to my husband, you know, I really feel like I'm representing my gender. I'm going to be visiting all these breweries that have never met a woman brewer before. I'm going to walk through the door. And as soon as I open my mouth, I'm going to be one of the boys because I'm going to just be speaking the beer lingo. I said, but I, but I feel like I wish I had something like, you know, like, like pink boots because, um, because boots are the ubiquitous piece of safety equipment. Pink is in current times considered a female color. Although in ancient times, like in ancient Rome, it was called light red and it was a warrior's color and you dressed your sons in light red to, so they could grow up to be strong warriors. And go. so, um, so uh, just before I left his mom, my mother-in-law sent me a pair of pink boots in the mail. So during this trip, I had started calling the trip, my pink boots tour because I was wearing these boots everywhere and everybody seemed interested in seeing them. I thought they were like super flashy. I'd worn black boots my whole career. I thought they were just, whack job bubblegum oh my god but now <laughs> i'm totally used to pink boots and i can't even imagine brewing in any other color i like them i i asked for some and they somebody told me i couldn't get pink boots and i asked why and they, they mentioned something about this and i was it, like you know i'm fit the uh, really uh, back then obviously I've bought some over the years i know of men who've bought some but you just you know, Dunlap stopped making the steel toe pink boots the lady monarch which annoyed me and i set up a email in a, in a mailing campaign and even call them and they ignored it all. So, <laughs> no, I, I remember when we were, we were talking about, you know, you continuing the journey and finding more women. And we kind of, um, we kind of correlated it to, well, there's the red hat society. Like there's already a group of women that, you know, wear something that identify themselves that are around. And I was like, Oh yeah, that'd be rad. Like I just, those are the things that I remember. And so, so we, so we kind of came up with the name Pink Boot Society. Um, you know, as I'm gonna put that, put that list up onto my website. That's kind of where it came up, and um, and it stuck because um, immediately I started getting emails from people saying, "Can I join?" You know, beer professionals who weren't brewers, but they were still women beer professionals, and from men saying that, you know, oh, I have a daughter and, or I have a beer blog and this is the coolest thing because most people at that point, excuse me, just like each of us, didn't think there were any women brewers anywhere. And the fact that I, there were 60 on a list was mind blowing at the time in 19, and no, it was at 2007. It was mind blowing at the time. <laughs> the Celebrator was always, you had a few articles about your trip to the Celebrator, didn't you? I did. I did. Yes. Yeah, that's, I was, that's, or I remember first reading about you. Yeah. An American brewer published something. And then when I finished the trip, um, new brewer magazine asked me to write up something. So I had seen some regional differences and some changes over that summer. I mean, that was summer of 2007 during that, the first half of that summer, everyone was talking about expanding, uh, greenfield breweries, new breweries. And by the time I was coming back, everybody was talking about um, the big fires in Australia and the pressures that was putting on the malt, uh, the barley crop for malt prices. And then the little bit of flutter about housing bubbles. And so that was 
when I was on that trip was really where this transition into that big global financial crisis was really just starting. That's insane. It sounds like you had a revel. I mean, you did. You have a red. Uh, had a revelation on this trip. Where and as surprised as you were that you found sixty plus women in the industry, how surprised were uh, were you when you found out that not only that that people wanted to be a part of this particular thing that you were spearheading? There's one thing <laughs> to have women in 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 beer, and then there's another thing. Uh, uh, to have women that want to forge uh, together and want to help one another ex grow in the industry. This is how, this is where Terry Terry gets uh, coined the word voluntol. You can call her. <laughs> I didn't make that word up. Uh, I'd heard it before, what? but yeah, um, you know, we had that meeting that Laurel organized um, in San Diego, and it was amazing at, at Gordon Beers. It was at Gordon Biersch and it was so wonderful. I, 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 if you don't mind, I'm going to tell you about that first meeting because it was so empowering and just Please. uplifting. And we had 16 women brewers in the room and six beer writers. Uh, there were other beer writers, men who wanted to cover it because I mean, it was the first time in the beer industry we were going to have a room full of all estrogen. And, um, and, uh, and I told the, the male your journalist i said no 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 send a woman we don't know what it feels like to have all women in the room so we did have all women in the room and they had never met each other and and they all brought beer to share and i noticed that people were really communicating in a very different way than an all-male room we can talk about female and male communication patterns later if you want but i was i really <laughs> i have kind of a direct male type communication pattern and i had to learn how to be a lot gentler with uh, my communication <laughs> plan. I wanted to actually get you done by volunteers. And so, um, and that's where the voluntold comes in because, you know, people would come up to say, well, you ought to do this and you ought to do that. And I said, there is no, you ought to. And people say, I heard about your club. It's not my club. It's your thing. I'm doing it for you guys. And it's ours. And uh, people would say, well, you ought to do this. And I'd say, well, that's a great idea. If you're really into it, then uh, I'd like to make you chairperson of that uh, that category. <laughs> and, and so uh, people got voluntold, uh, absolutely. And <laughs> that's what it means. All right. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you want stuff to happen. I mean, I can't do it all. I got a full time career myself, kids. You know. So uh, six months later, we had another meeting, and so. Um, um, uh, so at the first meeting, I said, let's vote on some things. Um, I said, do you want to be an organization or an online list? And they voted, uh, the 16 women brewers voted to become an organization. I said, well, I don't know what that means, but it sounds like more work. Uh, so I'm going to need some help. Uh, that's where the vol vol telling comes in. And then um, I said, well, who are we? And the brewer said, well, look around, Terry. We're women brewers. I said, look again. There are six women beer journalists who have also asked to join. So we had a lot of discussion, including should we have males, have men as members? Two of the women um, really wanted men as members. But one of the things I wanted to steer them with was the idea that we have to stand for something or we stand for nothing. And I said, if we want to survive, like, you know, beyond just having a big party every year, we have to stand for something as well. And so um, I told those two mem those two women, I said, you know, give it two years. I don't know where this baby girl wants to go, but she's going to have a mind of her own. And trust me, Laura knows that she does have a mind of her own where she wants to go. Right. And, and I I remember that they were they were really adamant because they want they didn't want their male colleagues to feel like they were being excluded. They you know they had been taught, they had been led, they had been mentored, and I, the idea was that we were trying to to make them or help them understand that we weren't trying to eliminate them. But like Terry kind of mentioned, we had never really had a space of our own. Like it was something that had never been done. Where it's like, what does it feel like to only have women communicating with women, especially in a male dominated? industry having you know talking about pumps and not feeling like you're stupid asking questions where you don't feel like you're being judged on your gender and so we wanted to be able to offer something outside of that space 
and allow a, a safe space essentially at that time. Right. Uh, and we didn't really know what those words almost even meant. So, so I told those two uh, gals, I said, um, just let it sit for two years and see what happens. Cause we don't know where this is going, but let's see what happens. And if after two years, you feel a strong need that we need to have men in this organization, then bring it up for a vote again. Well, they'd never brought it up again. In fact, one of them came to me later and said, I totally get what you're doing now. I didn't right. understand it then. And so, you know, we needed this. The industry needed this. I mean, we are a minority. It brings diversity to the industry. And the cool thing that happened after we named ourselves and became an organization, um, it was like a lightning rod. And so we got a lot of media attention and just beer industry attention right. because it, nobody had ever seen anything like it. And that visibility actually encouraged other women to choose beer as a career that may not have ever happened. You know, I had met a few women brewers over the years. They were in for two years or something, left the industry. And, you know, I never thought about why is there a turnover with women in the industry? I mean, I had my job. I was happy and I had my male friends and I didn't really see any problem with it. But now in hindsight, I can see that they did. They needed a kind of a support that I didn't personally need. And so now the support is there. We don't have that kind of attrition with women in the industry. And, um, um you know, for other minorities, I have told other minorities, let's say black brewers or some male black brewers. And I said, you know, this is really working for us. You guys should form your own like black boot society or your own version of it. You know, they never did that. I think that would have been very beneficial. You know, um, diversity is a big issue right now. We're really tackling that within pink boot society. Laura knows more about that than I do. But, you know, the way that diversity was defined in 2007, it was like, how come it's all men? Well, now, you know, the women have had their toehold in it and we're establishing ourselves. Now mm -hmm. the whole term of diversity has broadened. Mm -hmm. And so Pink Boot Society is really trying to embrace broadening of that whole concept of what diversity is. Right. It's, almost, still, a, it's almost an evolution in sharing. In a lot mm -hmm. of ways, you know, where before you had to actually go visit breweries, you had to read books, and then the internet came along and everybody had an opinion. And now you can actually go to a like-minded group and get advice, you know, which is pretty uplifting. There's a degree right. of comfort there. Right. And, and, we, and we did this before, you know, in 2007, when she started her list on the Excel document, I mean, it was well before social media is right. where it is. <laughs> Oh, we're able to connect and make groups and chats, whatever. I mean, we were all communicating via email and we had a Yahoo forum. I mean, it was, those were like at the very beginning of times. And obviously it was a grassroots organization that has grown. I mean, Amy, you shake your head, but I mean, we, the, if a member, like if you signed up with us, cause it was free at the time, if you signed up and never told us, Terry was sending up monthly um, newsletters, but if we had we weren't able to track. There was no data being able to be collected because we couldn't right. keep up. Because if you didn't tell us that you changed your email because you changed jobs or a position, we had no idea. So people would contact Terry and ask her for stats and data, and it's just, it was just so overwhelming. And you know, you can have as many volunteers doing the work, but it just kept growing and growing by like 10, right. 20, like as much as craft beer itself was growing, we were seeing that growth also happen in Pink Boots. And I think that I'd like to, I attribute Pink Boots Society also having an effect to bring in more women into craft beer, which it's oh, yeah. helped to bring in, you know, the growth of women in this industry. It's not Absolutely. nearly where it needs to be, but it definitely, I think that Pink Boots Society is, is definitely the stepping stone that allowed Women, more women to feel comfortable in that space. I, I, it, was I, I think you're right. it was so long ago that there were no smartphones. I had a little flip phone. There wasn't even GPS. And so when I was going, driving from brewery to brewery, I would call them on the phone and I would get directions, which I would write down. And while I'm driving this <laughs> trailer behind it, I was trying to read my directions so I could get to the next brewery. There wasn't GPS had just come out and it they were like a thousand dollars a unit. So um, you know, there's no GPS on your phone, none of that. So it was right. like 
ancient in terms of technology. All, all the obstacles of, of streamlined communication were, were, were kind of against you and they were kind of evolving with your organization. Now, Laura, um, your former president, you know, Terry has created this beautiful, beautiful, like node that's about to branch off. Right. And you're the former president. Where, where, where did you find that besides giving, I guess, Terry, the, 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 the push that you needed to, to create the actual organization, the baton gets kind of passed off to you as a former president. And then there's a whole other, uh, it's a, it's like another beast. So Terry needed someone to step in. She was uh, the, the, the growth of Pink Boots had continued, continued, and she was just she you wanted to spend some time with her husband. Had you know, I think we had changed careers three times during this. Is that correct? Um, well, I went from unemployed to yeah, one job, and then to my current job. But I I ran it for nine years. That's yes. a long so, time to make all your free time one thing. So um, so I stepped in. I, I'm sorry, I stepped in to to kind of take it off her shoulders to kind of. Say we got this. You can take a breath and right. take a break, and you know, settle down and sit back and sit back. We got this. I promise you, we won't fail you. Um, and I know it was hard. I trust me, I get it. Uh, but you know, it was one of those things where I was, I was the right, apparently the right woman at the right time um, that needed to come in. And I, you know, I, I attribute Pink Boots to helping me become a leader because there was no way. I remember seeing Colby being like, "What the f- am I?" I <laughs> what the hell am I doing? And he just said, he, I remember Colby saying, just whatever, what is your legacy? What will you leave it with? And I was like, oh, that's some really solid advice. Um, but before all of this, I know we have these two other lovely ladies here. Because Terry was hosting meetings during CBC and GABF, as a shift brewer, I never got sent. Those were never anything that I could attend. And I remember approaching Terry and asking, you know, maybe we have chapters. That way, if people get sent to CBC or GABF, they can attend these meetings, these national meetings, and then they can bring information back. And, you know, I remember Candace Moon would go, and I'm like, well, you, you can go learn something. You know, Pink Bruce is all about education. Like, we're all about um, supplying education to the women near you, right? So it's it's lift one woman up, and the other woman's going to you're gonna lift the next woman up. It's like this ladder effect. So the more education that a, that a woman got, then hopefully the more she would advance in her own career. And so if they were able to go to CBC or GABF and learn something, they can then turn around and teach it to the women nearest them in their neighborhood. And that's kind of the start of how chapters became. And so I ran the San Diego chapter here for the longest time. I've had there's been iterations of other chapter leaders coming I'm not a party planner, so I'm not the best at, at much of that. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of how that's how we have, you know, Amy Stackman, and then that's how we have Lexi. Is they're the current chapter leader, so they're responsible to communicate and help, you know, the women here locally in San Diego to get some education, learn something new, teach each other a new um, aspect in beer or beverage or. Now we're a fermented beverage, so we've been doing some wine and some distilling. So that's the reason these two lovely ladies are here. That's that's a good that's a good way of bringing them in because you you have a different you have a different order. It's a taller order because the three of you, all of you, but the three of you specifically, they're in San Diego and taking the lead in the San Diego chapter. San Diego is a hotbed for craft beer. So with the popularity of craft beer and the expansion comes more women that want to be involved that don't know how to get involved. How, how has that played into everything? Well, we have the largest chapter. Um, I know that we've kind of fluctuated with Boston a little bit here and there. Yeah, flex your arms. Got it. Uh, but it's, it's kind of been, as San Diego craft beer scene has grown and more, like you said, more women get involved, they kind of get more involved with Pink Ridge Society. The problem here in San Diego is we're so spread out. So North County is so hard to get down to South County, especially during traffic. Um, but I think Amy and Lexi have done a great job. And I'll let I'll shut up, Amy, Lexi, someone else. <laughs> wow, that was that was really inspiring. Um, thank you both, Terry. That was incredible. Um, yeah. How long, I mean, how long have you guys been co chapter presidents leaders? Oh. Um. I mean, started almost two years ago. Yeah, almost two years for me. And then uh, Lexi, I believe you came on uh, November, November. Of 2019. 
Have you got to go out on Laura's stand-up paddleboard yet? Not, but I have been wanting to get one myself. And now that I know that she'd go with me, hopefully. I haven't gotten on it yet either. (laughs) You're in the right position to get one, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, Amy, how how did you, we'll start with you um, and then we'll go to Lexi, but what what spawned your interest in in joining an organization that was promoting this inside of the industry? Uh, so I was a former preschool teacher for seven years, uh, uh, specifically Montessori, and lifelong learning was a huge thing that we talked to my students. And uh, when I realized that I didn't want to do teaching anymore, I wanted a strong immune system and not be sick every week. Uh, I found my way <laughs> to beer through a series of uh, interesting events. Uh, and it was, I found beer and I had obviously drank a lot of beer because of my students. And, uh, so (laughs) when I heard that there was a, an organization that, uh, was women based, uh, my husband was in Iraq at the time and I was kind of feeling out where I kind of fit in with our new lifestyle and our new everything and new career. And I thought, oh, it'd be cool to meet some ladies and, uh, and learn, continue doing that. And so, um, I found I don't even know if it was word of mouth or a flyer in a brewery bathroom or something like that, but someone somewhere told me about it. And I was like, I'm going to check this out. And um, I'm a huge nerd for education in, on any level. And the first meeting was about um, flavor agents. Uh, and it was just so fascinating and sitting around listening. I mean, I only had only worked in beer for, I don't know, less than four months. And I was already at this meeting and listening to people like, you know, Jen Mann and um, all of them talk about just how these beers, they were developing all these flavors and and tasting uh, whatever control it was and going from there. And I was just mind blown. Uh, And it was just so awesome. And that first meeting has still stood out to me of just, Wow. Um, And then even just having the flip side, as we mentioned about women coming into uh, beer, having worked in a prior female dominated industry and then having the tables turned where now I'm the minority, that was a whole nother appreciation for what we're doing. It was really, really, really interesting to see that dynamic shift. But yeah, the education um, is what led me in. And then I've met girlfriends now that I consider to be family and here I am now co-leading San Diego. <laughs> Being badass. Uh, your energy is amazing. I mean, we've met, we've met like uh, down at, uh, I think I met you at Mujeres Brew House mm-hmm. uh, with Estela, which is, it's basically exactly what something like Pink Boot Society is, is, is trying to spit out, right? Which is empowered women making starting their businesses and being the heads of those businesses that are uh surrounded by or creating fermented goods and stuff like that it sounds like there's a lot of energy there that's not only strong but powerful but positive lex what's up how do you how do you get involved in this um it kind of starts with my i'm gonna go with the same uh line as amy did and start with how i got into beer in general but um i i must like being a minority because my old job was teaching scuba, which is an extremely <laughs> male dominated industry. Um, I was one of the only females. I mean, yeah, it's the same, same thing, but um, I made a career change and then um, all in about the span of a month, uh, I lost that job. My parents moved away. I had to move houses and like something else happened. It was like my whole life fell apart. And so it's like, well, what am I going to do now? Um, and then I just kind of looked at, you know, what I enjoy and then was like, maybe I should try beer because I love beer. I drink it all the time and let's see how this goes. Um, and then I wanted to be production always. Um, that was like my dream. Really? I remember like talking to people getting into this and people were looking at me like, wait, why? Like you're, you know, whatever, a woman, whatever, like, are you sure you want to do that? Like, yeah, that's what I want to do. 
So I applied at, um, we used to go to the Carl Strauss by my house and our favorite bartender was leaving. So he's like, you should apply for my job. Um, if not, you should apply at this other place, um, the other location. So I applied there, um, got hired. Little did I know, um, it was the only location of Carl Strauss that didn't have a brew house. So <laughs> oh, no. I was like, okay, well, so I worked for the house for a while, um, learned as much as I could, which I'm forever grateful for. They were phenomenal. Um, and then like two months in learned about, uh, pink boots. And I ended up going to the collab brew that year, um, with Paul Segura downtown, which was incredible. I adore him. Um, and just totally fell in love. Um, I joined before I even went to that day. And then after that, I was like, how do I get involved? This is what I'm here for. And, um, since then, you know, it's just been kind of up and up and up. And I'm so grateful to have met all of the incredible women that I have and be involved with all these, like, I can't believe that I'm on a call right now with the people that I'm here with. Like, and, and Lexi's a scholarship, Lexi's a scholarship recipient. So one of the main things that Pink Root Society, you know, has done since 2013, one of the, the big projects that Terry had taken on was, um, making Pink Food Society a nonprofit. And so she filed paperwork in 2013 in order for us to get nonprofit status focused on education. And we've been offering scholarships ever since. And Lexi <clears throat> happens to be one of our scholarship recipients. So that's amazing. She, she came it back with, oh, sorry. It took me four years to write a 98 page application with the help of that mother-in-law who gave me those pink boots. And then it took a year of dialogue with the IRS to get the 501c3. And and I am not an administrator. I admit it. I am a creator. And doing paperwork like that is my worst nightmare. <laughs> Which happens to be one of the reasons that I'm super protective of our nonprofit. And I want people to stay in line because I know the time, the effort, and the energy I had to go into it and people don't realize that it's not just like a click of a button and something's oh, no. done. It's like, you gotta be, you gotta be on the up and up with the IRS. Yeah. And the thing is, is that like now the craft industry has grown from you know, in 2007, there might've been a thousand or so breweries. Well, now there's like what, 8,000 or something. And so now there's so many breweries that, that a lot of people, including women can specialize in things like law and they can maybe do some pro bono work for a nonprofit like us. But at that time, there was nobody. It was just a bunch of brewers. And I'm trying. It's so funny. I'm, I remember trying to start the Portland chapter while I'm working the national and the international thing. And I'm trying to get our, my local brewers to, like, send in evites so we could have a meeting. And they're like, they don't even have email. They're brewers. They're in the plant, you know, or in the brew pub in the brewery and they don't even know how to use email and i'm trying to to help them like learn how to use email much less evite plus <laughs> run international national and somehow get a 501c3 my head's exploding for nine years solid <laughs> this is why i needed laura because laura's been amazing you, laura you were literally the best person i could have chose and i didn't even choose her she said well everybody else has a job on the board uh, I guess I'll, I'll volunteer. Who's going to be president? And I said, well, she looks at me. I go, not me. And uh, she says, well, I guess I'll be president, but there's nothing. What am I, what am I, what do I do as president? I said, you make sure everybody else does their job because if they don't, it's falling in your lap. And she now, volunteered, oh, she volunteered herself. Yeah, I'm kind of bossy, so it works out. Well, it goes with the territory. And I'll tell you, Laura was kind of quiet meeker little person when she started being president of pink boots society she is a badass now because pink oh, yeah. boots society makes you put on your big girl britches and your big girl boots and step up man because Woo! we we got to make it happen internationally yeah. and, and laura did that you have to be a good I, you have to be a good herder i, yeah. I remember i remember Here's to that look i'm, I I'm drinking telling, this right here i remember ah! telling I remember telling Terry, hey, we're going to start charging dues because this is ridiculous that this is all this work is happening and no one's paying nothing. And she's like, that's not going to work. 
And I'm like, it's only $35. Come on, everyone. It's a year. Come on. No big deal. We are paying for stuff. And she, so as soon as it happened, she's like, oh, it worked. And I'm like, but then, yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad we had no dues for nine years because we had to build the value. And oh, we right. built the value. And it's freaking solid value. And so when Laura says we need to, to charge dues, at first I was freaked out. And then I was like, you know what? We got the value. We nailed that. We nailed that. One of my favorite things when I was getting the San Diego Brewers Guild back on its feet after being down for a couple of years was uh, all I was asking for was for a hundred dollar gift certificate from each brewery so that I could trade services for gift certificates. And I would get the question, I was, well, what does a hundred dollar gift certificate get me, you know, from like a brewery owner or something like that? Because there was no value in the San Diego Brewers Guild at all. So I definitely hear where you're coming from on that. Yeah. Well, when you're when you're an un, underrepresented uh, demographic or you're a minority in a particular industry, you have to inject yourself with a, a certain amount of ferocity, right? And it sounds that you ladies were the perfect amount of energy and 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 confidence and to to, to enter the uh, uh, male dominated category of industry like craft beer or beer in general. And what you were able to do is you were able to ignite this kind of and uh, this this fire that people like Amy, Lexi, and, and countless others were able to to adhere themselves to, and you, you came in hot. And <laughs> was how scary was that? Well, I think the word you forgot to mention was stubborn, because <laughs> you know when you give birth to something, you're really stubborn about letting it die. So you know there were times I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And I had to remind myself. If not now, when? If not me, who? And so it had, I, I just thought, I, I don't have a choice. Right. I have to do this because no one else is willing to do it. And it has to be now because, because once we formed Pink Boot Society, the women who were answering the call were so excited to be part of this movement that we were creating. And, and they were so inexperienced. As I said, they didn't even have email. And so I'm trying to like, ah, you know, it's it's like, Amy, you, you got some kindergartners or preschoolers and you're like, okay, kids, you know, you're going to send out invites for a little local meeting and they're, they're preschool. They're like, what the f***? Uh, <laughs> That's where Amy's That's expertise comes in. How my classroom was. <laughs> So, um, so, you know, we started the fire and then we were responsible for feeding it, kindling and keeping it going. And, uh, and then we voluntold, you know, a bunch of people so that they could keep feeding the fire and keeping the fire going. And we got a freaking bonfire, you know, and, and, um, and it, it's fantastic. And, you know, we didn't really have a purpose at first. What do we do? Have a party every year? In our second meeting, I'm like, okay, let's do some more voting. You know, should we become a nonprofit? Well, first I'm like, maybe we should have, you know, scholarships because the main thing is that we are not against anyone. We are beer cheerleaders. We are not against men. Um, we are always for women in beer. And so some people at the beginning really didn't understand that concept. They felt that, you know, I had a young guy even. It was young. He was young. It was kind of shocking, you know, because you think young guys are not going to be like, say stupid but at any rate, this young guy's like, well, you know, I don't trust you guys having meetings because you're probably in there bashing men. And I'm like, we don't even have time to talk about men. We have so much we need to talk about. We're we'll start trying to get a 501c3. We're going to set up scholarship program. Laura was the scholarship committee chairperson for how many years, Laura? Like eight years or something? I'm like, like forever. It's a long and time. It was a long time. And uh, she did an amazing job. And it was all behind the scenes. And so people just have no idea. There were, for every scholarship, back when I was still founder, whatever, president, secretary, treasurer, all the um, you know, it took 12 people to touch every scholarship because of, you know, um, I had to find scholarship admins who could keep track of things. I had to find someone who was willing to volunteer to be a scholarship partner liaison. I mean, all these behind the scenes things that you don't think about. And, um, and then like, I, I, Laura laughs at me, but I had a thinking couch because I, I was like, 
I've never done this. I mean, talk about just putting on your big girl britches and doing it, man. I mean, I've never been in charge of really anything uh, except for like maybe an assistant brewer, you know? And so it's like, Oh, I'm forming an international organization. What the hell does that mean? And, uh, you know, uh, and just, you know, how can we make something that, that has is bigger than all of us? Because this is the thing that I boiled it down to just with thinking is that, you know, if, if we're just helping ourselves, or if we're just having a party every year, it's just going to fall apart eventually. But how can we make it bigger than ourselves that we could all like group together and push it up from the bottom. And so that's, how do we do that? How do we do that? And how do we, when somebody, let's say, gets a scholarship and we never say winner, we never say, oh, you're the winner of this scholarship, because what does that mean for the other women who applied? We have zero losers in Pink Boot Society. They are all winners. So we have scholarship recipients and the ones who do not receive a scholarship, need to gain some benefit from the one who is lucky enough to be a recipient. So we, so I designed, we're going to have a pay it forward program that, that if you are the recipient of a scholarship, even before you, when you apply for that scholarship, you need to tell us, how do you plan to pay it forward? Because that's important to us. You know, the bigger the pay it forward, the better we like it. If you could write for New Brewer Magazine, if you could deliver a seminar at the, the at, at the Craft Brewers Conference, that's what we want to see. And if you are just can't get accepted for those big chew things, because we like to bite off more than we can chew because we got those big girl britches on. Yeah. So if, if you just can't big off, bite off that big of a chunk, well, then, you know what, we'll publish it on our website or, or you're going to give uh, your talk at, if not a national meeting, then at a local Pink Boot Society meeting. But somehow you That's are going to pay it forward, damn it. You are going to pay it forward because somebody needs the benefit besides you. I mean, we at the beginning, we had six scholarships, you know, and, and maybe 500 members. Well, now we have like 2,000, 2,500, whatever members, and we have maybe under 100 scholarship recipients a year. But we need those 20, 2,000, 2,500 members to gain from every single scholarship. And better yet, we want the entire beer industry, all 8,000 breweries with all of their average of who knows how many, you know, people working for them. And now we cross fertilize with all the rest of the beverage fermentation industries because, you know, Somebody who's learning something about yeast and it happens to be beer school. Well, guess what? Everybody else can benefit from that too. How do we give back to the world of beverage fermentation? I and think so. Preach. So. Right. Right. Cheers that's to that. What we do. That's what we do. Oh, yeah, that's what we're talking about, Terry. Uh, that hey. is the energy. That is the energy that, al although you might falsely assume was directed just at women and beer. It was actually directed to anybody anywhere. That's, That's what you can take away. Industry. The pay it forward <laughs> aspect of the uh, scholarships, I think is so cool too, because one, it provides an awesome meeting topic. And two, it really reminds our members of, um, uh, you know, why they're, part of our society for the education piece. And it's inspiring to know, hey, my girlfriend Lexi scholarship or our friend Jerry got to go to Germany on the trip. And it just kind of creates a lot of cool conversation and, and it really just ignites why we're in it. You know, it's, yeah, we're yeah. all friends and it's fun to kind of catch up over beers and, and share, you know, how to set up a jockey box at a festival. So you're not having to go ask your neighbor what's going on, but it's so special, the ability to have that pay it forward option to come present at a meeting of what you received or you know, write an article for other people to be inspired, male or female. Um, and it's that's just so cool that we can continue to share that and show off what our membership brings us. I got two more things I need to say about that. One is that with Zoom and modern technology that we've learned during this pandemic is that we can spread our message even farther. Anytime we've been paid forward, we got to blow it up to the whole world so everybody can learn from it. You're doing yeah. it right now. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, oh, shoot. Now I forgot the other thing. But oh, it's okay. I killed it. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. The, the thing, so the scholarship that I received um, was to uh, Hop and Brew School up in Yakima, which was incredible. Um, and I came back and taught Which may everybody. be the last one in person because of I know. COVID for like a good handful of years. For serious. Um, but I came back and we had a huge attendance uh, that meeting um, down at Latchkey. And uh, Laura was there, Amy was there. And record um, number of attendance, one of our biggest number of attendance, I think. Yeah, I think so. And I, I did a whole um, presentation on, you know, I did yeast and proper yeast handling, storage, all that. I did um, all sorts, of, mostly hops. But it was incredible how many women came up to me after who I know all of them, but everybody was so interested. And so many women were like, I want to go to this. What does it cost? I'm going next year. And then so a bunch of us planned to go in 2020. <laughs> but that didn't happen, obviously. Um, but it was incredible just the amount of a small piece of I spent three days in Yakima and met a ton of people, learned a ton of stuff, brought it home, taught a bunch of our women. And everybody was so fired up about it. And it's, you know. The possibilities are endless. Speaking of paying you know, it forward, other- I think Laura should pay it forward and tell us how her and the team made this delicious white beer that we're drinking. I guess I better open it. I killed all of it, so that was pretty it's, good. It tastes I'm gonna, like I'm gonna, cunny I'm blossoms. Use my, oh. use my pink boots um, bottle. bottle of water. Water. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yes. Members only. Yes, exactly. That was for our 10th anniversary. Ladies, we are approaching our 50th anniversary this year. So, woohoo. Um, all right. So, you're drinking Dayfall. This is our Belgian white. This is actually a Chris Ketchum, uh, Ketchum done at Liberty Station. His recipe is essentially, I believe, witty moron minus the black malt and with some bergamot orange and coriander you're getting honey you said i could see that with a little bit more of like like a honey blossom you know like the flower kind of okay. floral you know with the honey background it was it was really drinkable that was the first beer i had and it's already gone like that was gone way easily um yeah i think good. this is like an intro beer right like we're trying to food beer too whistle. Yeah, and it's a versatile, yeah. great food beer. What would you pair it with? Oh, uh, you want to stay light, right? So I would go like uh, it almost has a lot of orange peel, like tangerine kind of to it. So a scallop, maybe with yeah. like an orange butter. Yes, Colby. Please. It says it says orange peel on the label. Well, yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> well, most white beers have it. I'm just it's coming through. Is that's what I'm saying? But there's also, right, you can go, like, uh, Wahoo uses Curacao and sweet orange peel and coriander. And then sometimes right. if, you, if you use too much coriander, it tastes like a hot dog. <laughs> so you got to be judicial <laughs> with it, <laughs> you know? No. no. But, <laughs> no, it's nice. I don't get any of that. You know, it's not too it's woodsy. A beautiful it's all beer. balanced. Yeah. It's super, it, it, super drinkable. It is one of those cheater beers where when you don't know what to pair with your food, if there's something like this on the menu, you can plug it in. And for the most part, it will, it, it, it tends to work. It's just one of those beautiful, uh, the Belgians got it right when it comes to pairing with food. I was, I was going to say I eat tuna or something, but I mean, I don't drink, I don't eat a whole lot of fish, but I have to have something like not super fishy. Right. Are they yeah, doing like a, uh, are they do, doing like a step mash or anything on it? Cause I, the well, body is really nice. It's super mm-hmm. silky. Yeah, this is lovely. I, I have a feeling that's probably from the naked oats. Mm. I'm looking at notes here, by the way. Sorry. But that would that would also make it good for spicy food because it would just uh, cut, well, cut down mm-hmm. that spice and acidity rather than accentuating it like a bitter beer. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's coriander in there, though. So wouldn't that be kind of highlighted a little bit more if you had something spicy? Well, I don't know. That woodsy kind of cedar from the linalool in the in the coriander, which is the same linalool and hops. So I think it kind of adds to it a little bit more. Again, if you overdo it, it gets a little, a little too uh, ballpark. <laughs> I love the descriptor. <laughs> I, uh, I have a question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I have to confess, mine is not 
cold, um, but it's delicious. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I, I'm sorry, I, Lexi. <laughs> Jeez. No, it's okay. I held um, you up too long. Been sitting on my you know table here for an hour. But, I um, dropped it off for you, and I was like, "All right, yeah, we're talking too much." And and you actually were kind enough uh, while I was dropping off your beer to give uh, to give me a little bit about what what you've actually yeah. brewed, which is Duckfoot. Lexi's a brewer for Duckfoot Brewing here in San Diego, and I got one of these little Kook Slams West Coast IPA. It's delicious. Go Those brew it up. Solid IPA, man. It's Neighbors. delicious. No, that's a beer we make. Uh -huh. uh, uh, <laughs> Hey, by the way, by the way, so let's let's talk about um, Laura. Your stone is a yes. it's a hallmark uh, trailblazer, right? Of of breweries in San Diego, and you have been there for a long time, making delicious uh, beer. How from from when Pink Boot Society started, and 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 the confusion and the raised eyebrows from everybody around the brewery or entering the brewery about wow, there's there's a woman here, and not only is she a woman. She's a badass making badass beer. How being stone is different because everybody everybody knows about stone. So how have you seen some sort of transition from from the I don't know kind of like awe of seeing a woman on the brew house to where you are now being the lead? Well, so I have to attribute a lot of that to Terry because I wouldn't have even known this was a potential career path. You know, when I met her, I was like, so people do this for a living, like a real, like, like long-term career thing. So we had a long conversation and she gave me some really great um, tips on like how to address some of like my, maybe some things that I was personally dealing with or what I was feeling at the time of my young 27 year old young lady. Um, and I, and I think, you know, for the longest time, because of here at Escondido, we have the big glass, it was always, for me, representation matters. So mm -hmm. the more that, that people brought in their daughters or even their young kids on tours or to the restaurant, I was like, as long as they see a female here, they realize that this is an open space for everyone. Um, and so for the longest time, I kind of, that's what I, I thought, like in my head. And we've had a lot of really amazing, amazing women that have come through Stone, have started off. In brewing and have left holly stevenson she works at guinness now we have nicole mandala she works for widmere um those are just to name a couple but we've had a lot of solid women that have come through here spent some time and then now have moved on to greater and bigger things um i think for me you know i i didn't know i was into beer until i, I pretty much got here i don't know that i knew what i wanted um, i kind of still don't know what i want um but I've been lucky with Stone. <laughs> I think I also with Stone has that like the the very masculine gargoyle, and I think that's, that's one yes. of the reasons why Pink Boots was maybe so super attractive was it was a little bit more feminine, so it was a little softer. Not that I'm trying to be more feminine, but it kind of I, I kind of am at the middle with like the pink and the boots, the feminine, and then also this like masculine gargoyle. The guys have to tolerate me. They have to put up with me. I've been here for 17 years. Come the end of the month. Um, wow. Around, yeah. Thank you. It's a long ass time to work at a place. Um, I'm kind of approaching that whole like Terry, you know, road trip thing. Like, what do I do with my <laughs> existential crisis? Like, do I just get to my job and put all that energy into making more beer, please? And I love what I do. Like, I'm lucky that I, you know, I work on the pilot system, so it's you know, it's our our seven barrel system here, and it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's definitely um, there's Viking space rope. That's that's my. Yeah. Boss. Did this come out of the? Did this beer come not, out of the? Not, not this look. Not this location. It came out of the Napa location. It is my boss's recipe though. That's his beer. The Viking it's space rope. It's delicious. Yeah. It's delicious. It is really good. It's um, super sessionable. Surprisingly, for what an eight and a half. Eight point five. Yeah. Um, and it's hazy. So um, actually, I'm going to promote the beer that I made at Liberty Station for International Women's Day. Oh, please. That's being released on March 8th, Monday, at um, a few of the stone locations. I made a hazy, a double. It comes at 8.6 using the Pink Boots Hop Blend. It's not hazy. I don't know. Apparently, know how to make hazy beers. I suck at it. It's a clear hazy. Don't worry about it. It's a clear hazy. So don't don't judge me. Don't judge me on my like, great beer or... Twitter or worst beer blog or any of those thingies. I think after you've been in the business for over 15 years, you physically can't make a hazy beer. It just 
Doesn't we tried. Matter. We tried. We tried. Yeah, no matter what you do. <laughs> it's, I guess I was like, like fiber is, being. We were looking at it. I'm like, I'm like, that seems hazy to me. Like, it's hazy. Chris is like, that's not hazy. And I'm like, but it, I can't see. If, I mean, you didn't filter it. And he's like, that's not hazy. I'm like, oh, well. it's not not hazy. It's not not hazy. <laughs> not filtered. A judge would call it hazy. A judge would call it hazy. How did you get the haze? You can't, you can't read the newspaper through it. It's hazy. <laughs> uh, hey, Terry. So one of the things that you all might not know about Terry, but she has ha she has trained some of the best West Coast brewers around. Do you want to tell them? Oh, oh, who I've trained? Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're amazing I mean, West Coast brewers. Um, I think I've been keeping track. I think I've trained or and or hired 51 brewers in my career. This is me the top cool ones. 51. This is, this is the, uh, you could say Jesus. the um, Terry Brewing School. But the Terry Brewing School is really an offshoot of the Triple Rock Brewing School because that's where I really learned my chops. And then I brought it to Steelhead when I worked there. And uh, I am proud of some of the people who used to work for me. Uh, Sean O'Sullivan at 21st Amendment, Jamie Floyd at Ninkasi. And so there's been a few, there's been a few who open breweries that fail. So, you know, not everybody uh, succeeds, but um, I do feel that uh, the Triple Rock slash Steelhead uh, training school has put out some amazing brewers. And, uh, you know, I'm all about the flow on a brew day. Um, you know, at, at where I work now at Great Western, uh, Malton, we, I'm in the Malton Innovation Center. We have a little brewery there. And so, you know, we get into the flow of a brew day and it's a beautiful thing. And it's it's important for you to be running the brew and the brew not running you because it's way more fun if you're running the brew. Um, so, um, so yeah, there's been a few uh, people out there who've, who've, who've made a real big success of themselves and I'm real proud of them. And I am, you know, if I ever work with those people again, uh, they'd be my boss. That's how awesome <laughs> they are. That's good. That's, that, that, that shows a true leader, actually, a true boss, is that you want somebody to, to eventually out-boss you, right? Like, you're Absolutely. training them to be better than you. Yeah, well, you know, that's a part of Pink Boot Society, and it's pay it forward, is that, um, you know, there's a reason why uh, we have the pay it forward with a written, say, published article or or let's say a, um, a seminar or a talk at the Craft Brewers Conference because you cannot be a leader in the world if you cannot write succinctly and succinctly enough to get published or to speak in public. So a lot of you know the women who are you know uh, receiving scholarships haven't really been forced to do that in their career in a public sense. And so um, I really think that just like the Girl Scouts, we are helping to make tomorrow's female beer industry leaders today by basically asking our scholarship recipients to step up. And, uh, you Beautiful. know, some people say lean in, but I like step up better. So, you know, step up and be a leader. I mean, when Laura took over the presidency, she had no idea what she was in for. And like I said, yeah. Laura's the biggest badass you ever met. And I'm so proud of what yeah, she brought she is. to society. And and I and I fired I fired myself from Pink Boots side because my wingspan is only so wide, and I knew that it needed new blood, new ideas, new energy, and um, you know there were things maybe that Laura that maybe I was like, oh I'm not so sure if that's such a good idea, but I shut my mouth up. I mean, okay, that's not true. I did like throw in my two cents, <laughs> but but I but I was not on the board on purpose because I did not want the other board members to look down the table and say, what does mom want? And the answer is mom wants you to be on your own two feet. And so um, wow. I totally allowed um, them to be the leaders they needed to grow into. I needed Pink Boots to grow into the big girl that she needed to be. I will say that when I handed the baton to Laura, I cried. It was like my daughter was going off to college. And I know that when Laura handed off the baton wow. to, um, to Jen, that she cried. Because it's like, my girl is so grown up. She doesn't need me anymore. I don't know how I feel about Laura, her. Laura, what, what was that like for you? For me? Well, for me, taking it from Terry, my whole, I, I feel like, especially the first year, I was like, don't fuck this up. Don't don't ruin this. Don't ruin something that is well-known in the industry. Don't ruin something. Um, 
try and make it better, but don't ruin it. Just kind of keep it afloat and look at what needs to happen, but mainly don't, don't ruin it. But I also, I, I said, I, I was like, well, if I ruin this, then I ruined my career. Like I was kind of taking both of them and putting them together. And that was really panicky. Like I was like, well, I don't want to ruin my career because I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. And the last thing I want to do is be the reason, like the, the, the woman that ruined Pink Boots, like, eh, you're not going to want to hang out with her. Um, <laughs> so when I realized that, you know, I hadn't trashed the organization and that handing it off to Jen would be a completely fine separation, it was a matter of, um, I was relieved. I was, I was able to take a breath and feel like, okay, the work has been done. Um, I think these women have it. They'll be successful with it. And they have been. Uh, I, but now it's more like I get hit up and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to put the energy towards that right now. Like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that right now. Like I'm I'm getting used to saying no, where before it was like having to say yes a lot of times and having to be present and on point and making sure what I said was for the organizational good and what I was speaking on behalf of the board and not my personal feelings. Like it's never about me. It was always very de uh, democratic, but now I'm just kind of like, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to dip my toe in that right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I also think that COVID helps with that. I'm not traveling. Um, so there's no request to travel. So I'm not, so right. it's been hard. It's been, it's not, it's been hard. It's been easy. It's been, it's been, it's only, it's only month two. I'm still getting used to all of this. I was at the, and it's hard. I was at the CBC when you were announced the new president and I remember waiting outside just so that I could see you right away and give you a hug because I knew how much I had gone through with the San Diego Brewers Guild. So I thought it was pretty cool that that you were kind of going on the same journey in a lot of ways. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons when I saw you at Fathom, we had that like even just as a quick passing, it was so important because you know, you're looking around at the support that you have and you have all this wonderful support and you have all these people that want you to see you do good. But you also I also knew how daunting it was going to be. And I just I just remember those words that you had said to me. You just said just what, what do you want? What's your legacy going to be? Like, what do you want to leave? And I was That's like, I just awesome. remember that. Because it, what, uh, I mean, Colby's, been through, Colby's, I, Colby's been through some stuff. So, I mean, I get it. I just want to say really quick, Terry and Laura, I think anybody, male or female, in the industry would have a really, really hard time challenging either of you for being most dedicated to the craft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, even coming into the industry and hearing these names like, oh, here's Terry. I'm like, who is Terry? Like, where is she at this meeting? Like, oh, she's the creator of everything. And then Laura, and you say those names around town and everyone just knows who she is, even though, Terry, you know. Terry just, called me the day after. Uh, uh, she called me the day, uh, January 1st. She said, hey, I know you're probably whatever. She's like, I just want to talk to you. And she had a heart to heart with me. And it, it opened my eyes to a couple of things that I don't really think I realized is she didn't want to be forgotten. She never wanted to be erased. And I was never trying to erase her. Um, I was just trying to make Pink Boots present. And so Terry had asked to be the greeter at CBC and she wanted to just be there to shake everyone's hands. And I, you know, at the time you're planning a meeting, you're like, sure, whatever. It's not, you know, whatever you want to do, you, you can do it. This is your organization. We're not going to stop you. But whenever, taking that moment and having that conversation with you on January 1st of 2021, I was like, Oh, I get it. Like you don't want to be replaced. You put a, your work, your heart, your dedication, you've put your career to the side. I mean, your career is still there, but like pink boots yeah. turns into literally your life. And for the, someone to take it on, you're like, Oh shit. Like I get that. It's a volunteer position. Voluntold. Um, yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, but you, it's also become so much of who you are that having that not be a part of who, who you presently need to be, and like you're looking to the future, and you're like, oh shit, what 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 now? Like what what's my role now? Like right. what's my presence now? How do I operate? How do I function? How will they not forget me? And I mean, obviously, Terry will never be forgotten. Um, I won't be forgotten because I got a lot of boys. Um, thanks to Pink Boots Society. But no, I, 
it's definitely one of those things where you you want to be recognized and you want to because you put in so much blood, sweat, and tears. And Absolutely. I mean, this Pink Boot Society is not just my daughter now. It's Laura's daughter because she earned motherhood by putting in five years I, of blood, I sweat, and children. tears. Blood, and sweat, and tears. I mean, honest to God, Pink Boot Society is Laura's daughter just as much as it is, is mine. And we don't want our daughter to just like disappear over the horizon and never but write, it, never right, talk. Well, that, but that's it's also where really it's, hard, hard to have volunteers because we do have high expectations. This isn't like come spend an hour of your time. Like our expectations are really high because we right. have ran this organization uh, you know, w whether it was a couple of people keeping it afloat, we brought in our management company and they do a great job, but there's still this very hands-on right. grassroots feel that happens. And it's just, all, it's, it's more all than for anything. Love. All for love. All for love. Yeah. yeah. yeah and so I mean, even, I have, a, even I have a quick question. Kind of not, I mean, I'm very off a little bit, but I definitely want to get to this is, is when you have the collaboration, like the pink, Boots collaboration day. Do you see an uptick in members after that day? You know, and and that could be like a grander, you know, national, international scale, or just Lexi and Amy, like in San Diego in particular. Do you see like more people kind of getting into it each year because of that? Is that one of the the highlights of the year as far as getting more new people kind of into the fold of Pink Boots? I mean, yeah, now I that mean, we I've... have other fermentations, us being allowed to join i think that's going to contribute to a huge uptick in membership um lexi continue on with what you were about to say <laughs> no i was just going to say that with collaboration brew day comes a lot more publicity than we normally get right. um and that just raises more awareness um in general so we get a little bit more visibility and i think that in itself you know visibility can bring in people um the collaboration brew day is of course you know one of our favorite events every year um and this year will be much different than any other year we've ever had because you know our 2020 brew day which is march 8th um or women's day is march 8th the brew day can be any day but um that was you know a week before the shutdown yeah so we kind of this will be our first year post covid um, so it'll be much different, I think, than any other year has ever been, but it's always going to be I incredible. Think also, with that token of, um, you know, pre-COVID when everyone is at work together and this and mm. that, you know, I, I like to think of uh, Lexi and I both worked at Carl at the same time, different locations, but, uh, you know, there'd be the members from Carl that you'd see more frequently at meetings. And then there was the ones that were a little bit more behind the scenes that were like, oh yeah, pink boots, I should join this. And so that kind of helped reignite that conversation to right. continue throughout whatever employer people are at and just kind of remind it, you know, either like, oh man, like I meant to do that, you know, and I lost a little piece of paper yeah. that said, you know, join and then now I joined up and it's just kind of a fun day to reignite while we're all here for the same mission. Right. And, and one of the things that I'm curious about, it's you, you have women like Laura and Terry basically tilling the soil and making it mineral dense for something like pink boots to, to have a solid foundation, a solid growth cycle. And then out of that, there's going to be branches that are going to that are going to produce the fruits of, of the labor. That's where Amy, you, Lexi, as far as the San Diego chapter is concerned, you're you're at the forefront now of making sure that this uh, legacy doesn't die or, or, or that it doesn't lose steam rather will never die, but like losing steam. And as women, um, in the industry be becomes a lot more of a regular thing. Um, what, where's pink boot society going, uh, in your estimation? I think, uh, on my perspective of having been uh, chapter leader for two years now, um, is is the joy in mentoring other women uh, and just continuing that process that no matter whether you're holding a leadership position that you kind of always hold that love for it in your heart. Um, I think about getting to share my experiences uh, at Mujeres Brew House and, uh, you know, talking about what we do. And one of the coolest things that really just 
continue to inspire was, you know, the whole idea of, you know, behind Mujeres of, you know, you might be a newer person to beer in general. And then now it's so cool to be like, this is how you get into the beer industry. Let me help you. Let me provide these resources to you that I've learned. And then uh, one of the girls, uh, she ended up getting a job with Modern Times as her first brewery out the That's gate. Awesome. Uh, just from her knowledge that she's collected. And she said, the first thing that she told me was, oh my gosh, I can finally join Pink Boots. I qualify. Ah, that's awesome. And I, I just bawled. It was so sweet. And to hear, you know, other women get hired on that are working that said, oh my gosh, I can join Pink Boots now. I can go to the meetings and I can apply for scholarships. And, and just to have that you know, of us just organically talking about it in conversation and mentoring, whether we realize it or not, um, the women are listening and it's, it's just, oh my gosh, it's tear fest for me. Cause it's oh, really, that's really awesome. inspiring. You come from, you come from a place that values education highly and, and you're looking at it from a perspective of when somebody learns something in this case, uh, a woman learns the industry it's going to invoke the same response to a child learning something or anybody learning anything where you're proud of that. Okay. They, they took that, that quantum leap and now you, you feel proud of them for, for, for doing it. It's, it's awesome. And I, I love it. I think about my own daughter all the time when I think about what you girls are doing. Um, Lex, what, what about you? Um, my, I think my passion is really in the education side and also just the camaraderie. Um, I didn't really get to it earlier, but um, when I ended up leaving Carl, the reason was because I met a fellow pink booter through, obviously, pink boots, who wanted to hire me at a much smaller place where there was much more um, opportunity, which was Duckfoot. Um, so I met Susie um, through pink boots, and then they hired me as a bartender. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, and I expressed to them, you know, my interest is in production and they're like, okay, well, we don't really have anything like that right now, but come work for us. So I did that. I did both for a while. Then, um, I kept just the best word is nagging. Like I was nagging them. Like I want to <laughs> get in the back, let me clean kegs. Like, let me do anything. And then, um, they eventually, um, let me, you know, dip my toes in the, in the water in the back and then realized I was like really serious about doing that. Um, and then, I mean, they've been behind me the whole way. Um, obviously, like I mentioned before, I'm a brewer now, um, which is beyond my wildest dreams. Um, but you know, that's, that's what I'm here for is the, the thanks Colby. Um, <laughs> the, um, the camaraderie and the networking is the biggest thing. I mean, there's so many, so many women and uh, people in general, especially in San Diego, that just through the network here, you can go so much further than you could have ever imagined to begin with. We have such a tight knit community in San Diego that you can, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Where can I go? Or like, Everything is onwards and upwards. There's and no backward steps. Lexi, you definitely helped make that happen. Uh, with COVID, we had to get creative of what are we going to do? Our monthly meetings were such a highlight for so many of us with the midst of our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, Lexi was the one that really bridged our chapter together with our Zoom meetings that we had. Uh, we've had plenty of educational meetings month to month on those. And happy hours which turn into happy many hours uh <laughs> you know you so love you know 10 p.m and yeah we start six, but we're still chit-chatting and and we've done this since the beginning and uh lexi's definitely helped invite new members that maybe couldn't make it down to a meeting before because of north county south county and reunite them um and introduce them and now it's it is just the coolest thing, uh, you know, or even, Hey, if you're coming up to my brewery, like, let me know when I'll meet you for lunch and then we'll go check out this spot. And it's just, it's just so warm. And I think that's such a really beautiful thing that we've been able to foster within the weird constraints and, and continue that camaraderie, even though we're kind of navigating, but yeah, Lexi spearheaded all of that. And 
you, I mean, you jump on a, a Zoom happy hour that we host any given week and, and there's at least a core six plus of us and people. Those were mental office. health check-ins. Those were <laughs> mental <laughs> health check-ins. Yeah, so mental we'll health yeah. check-ins. But, um, you know, our meeting, I mean, now that we're able, to, we're actually doing our first meeting uh, in person coming up on uh March 24th calendar in my head, March 24th, uh, at lost cause, uh, it's a Wednesday and, uh, we'll work pink mean girls reference. Just kidding. We're not mean. Uh, uh and, uh, you know, now that we can talk about me, that's going to be even cooler. Cause maybe that'll bring even more women out that, and that'll be our first meeting, uh, since February of last, last year, we were the second chance. And that was a mental health meeting, oddly enough. Uh, and just, advocating for yourself and uh, I'm super excited to see what that crew's put together and and we'll get to finally be in person and it'll be awesome. Yeah, I was actually just going to mention that with the with the adjustment that we went through last year of going from just beer, you know, for the last what 13 years um to now being all fermentation. Um we've had we've had such an adjustment there where now we have this entire i mean like what seven other industries that we've never been a part of that we're trying to figure out how to navigate and so one of the things that we've done during COVID is since we started including all the other fermentations in pink boots um we did in san diego we did um a focus each month on different fermentations so we started with um i think distilling and then we went to cider um we've done wine um, obviously, like Amy said, next month we're going to be with Billy at Lost Cause doing mead. And so yeah. it's like now all these women that are in beer or have been in beer are now also getting the education for wine, for wow. all these other things. Can I toot it's our horn that we just had two, two wine members uh, sign up? And that is so awesome. And the interest when you, when you think about... Uh, how many of us, you know, when you get quote unquote beard out and, you know, maybe you're having a glass of wine with dinner and you're like, why do I like this wine so much? Now that we have an actual sum on our chapter membership, oh my gosh, like how many resources and how much more are we going to be able to learn? And, uh, you know, I'm a yogi. I'm all about mindfulness. Let's be mindful about what we're sipping on, whether it's, you know, hard kombuchas or, or spirits or wine or this and that, and how do they crisscross and what are similarities and differences? It's just so freaking cool. Is there anybody like some of the new members that are, you know, the kombucha, the cider, the meads, are they, are any of those using the blend, the pink boats blend of the hops at all? Have you heard anybody going I off the rails a little? Get Junshan on it. I, uh, I Morgan, have, uh, I'm talking to you. Admittedly, checked the map of our registered breweries uh, for San Diego at least in a couple days, but I would love to see some cideries uh, dry hop that with the blend, or just get creative and funky with it and make it happen. I just there's so many possibilities, and the flavor profiles are so wide with what we picked. Um, and I mean, even how we chose the blend this year—that's a whole nother awesome that's a whole other topic we could go into <laughs> yeah. oh, please don't spare yeah. us the Break details it down. Uh, okay if you want to go there yeah um, let's, let's go there. Uh, <laughs> so we had a we had a system this year where <clears throat> so normally it's chosen at gabf hold on hold on stop and tell them okay. what the pink food society blend is to begin with before yeah, you even there. get there yeah Laura, you're why why you Laura, why don't thank you, you Laura. Oh, Laura, ahead, Laura, what what's the blend? Oh, I don't know. I, I can't remember what this year's blend is. So the blend is <laughs> Kelly Lohmeyer. I can't remember this year's blend. Uh, Kelly Lohmeyer of San Diego. The uh, Yakima Chief uh, had approached us and said, um, hey, what if on collaboration, it. It, which we had been doing for years, for, well, not years, but since 2014, um, what if you all did a dedicated hot blend and use that in your recipe instead of just focusing our recipe? And we thought that was really cool. She had gone originally had sparked the idea with the, at that time, the CEO, and I forget his name. I for, forgive me, Kelly and Yakima chief. Um, 
they sparked the idea that way and they said, yeah, that'd be great. Let's create a blend. And we created the first blend at GABF. And I'm forgetting the time because I'm drunk. I've had two beers. It's, uh, uh, this you're, year you're, is, you're two beers deep. So it's okay. This year is a, a tonum, cashmere, yeah. citra, laurel, and sabro. Whoa. Yes. So I'll let the ladies say how Google, they call me. We appreciate you. <laughs> I know. I I'm have here for up too. I'm like, so this year, since we all obviously couldn't be at GABF together, it was only judges this year. Um, who my boss went to and I lived vicariously through him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we chose, and now I don't remember, was it 10 cities? Do you remember, Amy? 10 of the top performing chapters. And yeah, I think it was 10. Members that were, that applied to get selected. No, the cities, how many, I think, I think it was 10. Yeah, there was 10, yeah. Okay, yeah, so 10 cities. And then uh, nationally, yeah, you're right. So there were five then random individual members who could apply to be included in the selection. So then what happened was Kelly and Yakima Chief um, sent out packages to each of these locations. So the San Diego, we, care packages. Yeah. So, Thanks we to were, the Yakima Chief local chapter, the Pink Shout Fruits out. Chapter. Yeah. Yes. The yes. Chapter killed it. Little thank you notes, like all packaged perfectly. It was very intentional. Um, so they sent oh. out, look, Laura Hazard was right there. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, get to select though. I was ousted. You were oh, wow. there. No, by, by choice. You were not yeah. voluntold. I was, I was just, I got a, I got a care package because of, of my status. That was pretty much it. Oh, it sounds like go. she still wants to be a part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always. And so you guys, you guys are getting these packages. So there was, yeah, so 10 we cities, we, we, that what's going on? What? We're just, nothing. I said, are we rambling? Is that nothing? I know. <laughs> I keep moving. Um, so there were 10 cities. We were one of the cities. Um, we get the hop sent. We did an initial, um, basically the way that we did it, because we're, like Laura said earlier, the largest chapter, we had to do like, um, an application and then like a lottery. So we, because of COVID, and this was back in, you know, six months ago or so, we couldn't have all these people in one place smelling the same thing, sticking their hands and everything. Like we just couldn't do it. Right. So we had to limit the attendance. Um, and then we actually hosted it at the Mujeres Brew House. Um, First educational that. event there. That was very awesome. Shout out. Hey, hey. It was lovely. We had a lottery system. You could apply um, from within our chapter to be included in the blend. And then from there, we chose, I think, 13. I can't, it was so long ago. And I think yeah, it was 13, 13 people. 13, yeah. And then um, we all got together, basically spread out around the room and created our, we smelled all the hops, then did an educational thing from Kelly about each hop. And then we all created our own blends. So we just went, you know, I'll take a little citra and a little sabro and a little this, a little, little salt bay into your hop cup. It was really <laughs> <laughs> And then we all um, then put our blends that we created together. And then we voted on the best blend. Secret. That's amazing. So, That's the way to do it. She oh, do it all the time. That's awesome. Yeah, it was totally blind. Um, and we ended up coming up with a blend. And then so uh, at that point, we submitted our blend back to National along with the other 10 cities. Um, and then National submitted our stuff back to Yakima. And they then took all of our stuff, did all their, you know, science. Oh, my science gosh. I know. It was insane. So the they DMV. Took all their... <laughs> yeah way more complicated <laughs> than the DMV um, and less wait times. Um, <laughs> they then did all their science, come, came up with a couple more blends, then sent those options back to us. And then we, with the rest of our hops that they had sent us, created those blends again, the ones that they had specifically sent us and then voted on those. So this That's is awesome. a several month process. <laughs> That's so <laughs> rad. That is so, but, that's the coolest thing ever. It was yeah, incredible. Yakima Chief was like literally had it all on lock. They did such a great job, like 
pulling it all together. They did an amazing job. I mean, I think so, this is the best blend we've ever done by far. How it's do you get awesome. it? Yeah. Can you get it if you're a home brewer? Yep, you can. Yeah, if you just go to the Yakima Chief website or your local homebrew shop. Two ounces, um, two ounce packs. As long as you remember to register your brew day, even as a home brewer. Uh, so that, that way your brew question. shows up on the map and then we can count you as being wow, incredible. Wow, that's so that cool. Uh, if I were not on my phone right now, I could whip up the notes that I took the other day. And uh, I heard that we have a record number of countries participating uh, that have registered this year. And uh, Rwanda is one of the places that's brewing. Uh, we'll we'll put it on the show notes, Amy, uh, you send me that and we'll put it on, for, the, yeah, on, the, I will on the show notes. Cause that's really that. cool. It is so, so, so cool. Is there a place that people can go with a list of who's participating in the collaboration day and who's using the hops? Laura. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, just, yes, just wondering. I was just wondering. Uh, Pink Society. <laughs> <or Thunder Collaboration. laughs> I'm like, I know I have those powers to see, but I don't. I think everyone that registers can see on the map, like who's got. Oh, anybody can. Anybody see. can see. Anybody can see. All you have to do is go to pinkfoodsociety.org, and I think the map is even on the front page. But it's, it's not. It's just so movie. awesome, and I mean, even it's, it's you mentioned the it's, homebrew it's community. Awesome. You show up. Uh, I always like to acknowledge Tijuana Homebrew Club with them, and the amount of women that are down in that community that are just fantastic and awesome. And, and the homebrew communities really have embraced Pink Boots as well. Um, and there's so many female homebrewers that I wish could just you know, get in there one day and, and be like, Hey, I'm going to take this pro and make this happen. And, you know, kind of like the quaff gone pro thing that was in West coaster a couple of years ago, let's make that pink boots gone pro, but on a homebrew level. To, it's so amazing. You know, it's so amazing. <laughs> I, no, no, it does make sense. And I can only imagine Terry listening to all of this. And it's almost like watching your kid walk the aisle of, uh, you know, from some some university going, okay, you, you, you should have some relief off your shoulders, Terry, going, okay, this is what has become of, 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 of that initial spark and how proud you must be to, and this is not the end by any means, but up to this point, how proud you must be of everything that you and everybody involved have accomplished. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I had dreams for Pink Boot Society. Um, I still have dreams for Pink Boot Society. And uh, what's awesome to see is that other people like like Laura and, you know, these, these ladies all have their own dreams for Pink Boot Society and they're being rolled in and they're all just blooming and growing. And uh, so, you know, I get to see things I didn't even dream about come to fruition because they were part of somebody else's dream. And then, and then I'm just like blown away, you know? I mean, I think San Diego, uh, another reason how our chapter is so unique uh, besides being the largest is within our, our co-leader dynamic between Lexi and I, uh, I'm front of house uh, pre COVID and Lexi's back of house. And so I think yeah. what a cool opportunity, you know, to have, that for leadership to reflect both sides of you know the industry and have a path where if someone one of our members is inspired to go you know production in some way or or any sort of back of house element that they can go to lexi and she yeah. can talk to them or set up awesome meetings or topics that i would never dream of setting up Right, because right. I just am not educated in that field, and so I'm learning from her, and I'm learning from again back of house friends, and you know, yeah. and then I'm here to support front of house members and what right. that looks like, and I hope that's something that can continue throughout Pink Boots, whether it's any chapter or just you know, or or maybe future leadership that other people, uh, you know, maybe there's a secretary that is our sales side <laughs> yeah. of things and that there's always a point person within your chapter leadership to help you guide wherever you want to go. I mean, I walk in the back of the house and yeah, I have the pink steel toe boots, but 
I don't know what the hell I'm doing back there. Like, I not yet. That's not my area, <laughs> you know. But it's so fascinating to kind of dig in the life of what's going on and be, you know, a fly on the wall and and look at everything and you right. know, other way or you know, or back of house people that joke like, oh my gosh, I could never talk to people all day. How are you in front of house? You know, it's just such an interesting dynamic shift. And it is, it is. Having, and, and, and to having steal from it's just so great. To steal from uh, Tim Ferriss, you 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 have assembled a tribe of mentors internal, like it, within your organization. Where when somebody has a question about the science of brewing, there's someone there that you know that can answer that question. When you have someone, when you have a question about the front of house tap systems, you name it, you have someone that you can reach Someone's out to. There. But 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 it's a it's it's a, it's a comfort reach out. One one of the things that, or, and we're gonna start wrapping up, ladies. But one of the things that that has really kind of struck me in this whole conversation is from a philosophical level, what you have done for women within your organization really speaks volumes about what we're doing here. Uh, what we're producing fermented and alcoholic beverages. It is not gender, gender uh, differentiating. It's not, it's not eth ethnic differentiating. It's, it's, it's a common human thing, right? And the, 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 the more advanced, your particular underrepresented demographic uh, becomes, or the louder it becomes in the industry, the more you kind of reach this common ground where it's like, all we're doing here is we're trying to facilitate good times, getting to know people, getting to understand people and having a, and having a, 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 a good time on this planet. Y you ladies are doing God's work and me coming at, uh, coming from a, a father of, of, of a daughter who's very much, going to grow up in the world of, of, of craft beer, your role models. And this conversation has given me more than, you know, it has given me that, Oh, that, that ignition. Like I got really excited listening to the four of you talk about what you do and why you do it. Thanks Jeff. Straight. Thanks, yeah, Jeff, we appreciate you and it's advocates like you uh, and Colby and, and everybody else uh, that, have supported Pink Boots and continue to do and continue to make us just feel super pumped up and it it's it means the world and and it's just so magical. <laughs> Sounds like an award show. Well, Pink <laughs> Sounds like Pink Boots awards are coming down the down the line here pretty soon. I mean, yeah. hey, we announced any of your news. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Handle it. Hey, listen, as we as we close up, I do also want to offer an opportunity to anybody that wants to uh, to promote or plug anything that you're currently involved in besides Pink Boots Society. Terry, is there anything that you wanted to uh, that you wanted to talk uh, send out there into the ether? Well, uh, I work for Great Western Maltings. Um, I'm the Malt Innovation Center Manager, so uh, yeah, I've been working hard um, in there since 2015, developing new malts. So. If people are interested in develop in, in like trying some new malts, we got some biscuit rye. Brew malt is a funk malt. We put the bugs in it for you, and then <laughs> we roasted them out. So uh, I hope you'll play with some of the malts that I helped develop because uh, I think they're pretty awesome, actually. And what's here. the what's the oh. darkest kiln malt that you're playing with? Darkest kiln malt. Um, yeah. Well, we've got a what we call melanoid, and it's a thirty color. Thirty, so, right? Yeah. Anything you know, darker than that? No, no. Well, we've got what we call steam malt, which is um, so it's 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 not crystal crystallized in a roaster. It's basically steam crystallized. Oh, nice. And so, so that's um, and we have found. Just through experimentation, we, we need to do more tests, but it seems to have less oxidative potential than yep. crystal malts. Right. So we, yeah. we've got that at a 40 color right now, but we've been experimenting with other colors. Just depends on what people want. We could create a whole line of them. Um, the brew malt is is basically like, it, it's it's about a 28 color, but it's it's been stewed, like you're saying, killed. Uh, but, but we, you know, being in a location since 1934, the same location for Great Western Malting, um, you know, the, the wild bacteria that are there are very comfortable. Right. Malt. So we just take some steam and some basically temperature and moisture levels and make those bacteria super happy. Um, and so, you know, my idea was, well, some people don't want to use live 
lactobacillus cultures in their kettle sours or their whatever. Thanks, John. For me. Thanks for indulging yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I texted him like half an hour ago, bring me the stone beers down. Uh, I know, he's Mr. Okay. Graver, what's up, John? <laughs> he drank them and he had to go to the store to get them again. Oh, oh, you want some? That's my glass. Dude, open it, open it. Open it. <laughs> uh, Terry, Terry, uh, the godmother, thank you so much. Um, so, Laura. Queen of beers. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Terry, I didn't mean to cut you off. More? Uh, well, and uh, you know what? I, I, have a, I have a side. I have a side hustle. Oh, yeah. I'm a yes. Potter. So, uh, so my pottery studio is called Rain Dragon Studio. And... Um, uh, my next online pop-up store will be uh, starting April 30th for a few days. So if anybody wants a Terry Fan of Original Pottery, um, go to randragonstudio.com and uh, on April 30th, there'll be some beautiful, most of my stuff are one-offs because I'm in the prototype stages, uh -huh. uh, but, but I don't put anything up that's ugly. Uh, so I, 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 think, I think there's some pretty, Cool stuff. Laura, Laura got one. Yeah, she got my first uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, uh, oh very cool. Awesome. It's awesome. I want to put my order in for the first clay carboy that you're going to do. <laughs> that sounds very heavy and very, very breakable. Um, <laughs> very, uh, we're we're going to post them. We're going to post them on the show notes. So, uh, they'll okay. be able to click directly on your link and you can, you can, you can have at it. I'm sure they're beautiful. Um, Listen, Terry, you, I, I don't know. I, there's no words to express what you have forged and, and what you continue to develop. So thank you. Um, Laura, plug time. What do you want to, you got a, anything to plug? Uh, well, so there is a beer, a beer called Boost that's being released through at Stone. Um, was brewed on behalf of International Women's Day. We're actually releasing it uh, prior to this podcast being released, which is March 8th. Uh, but it's called Boost. It's used in the Pink Boots blend. It's my attempt at a hazy. It's really awesome. It's super tropical in the sense of like peaches and apricots on the aroma and then tastes like cotton candy on the mouth. Woo! So it's pretty awesome. Uh, how'd, you, how'd you get a hazy? I'm going to keep asking technical questions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you I didn't get it super hazy. So my oat well, amount was not oh, very good. Oh, so it was oats. Then. It was oats. Yeah, okay, well, I would. Okay. I did not put. Um, I didn't put flour or anything like. Like I didn't. I don't know what I'm doing. I I make clear beer. I'm very <laughs> bad. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So I feel you. Over. I um, feel you, Laura. <laughs> sorry, my bad. Uh, but it's a really good beer that's not filtered. Therefore, in my mind, it's hazy, and it's called Boost because uh, we had we're actually Stones making three beers using words attributed from Pink Food Society. It was going to be called assist, but we thought maybe it sounded too much like assist. Um, oh, so I chose Boost. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I chose Boost because I think that Pink Food has boosted my confidence and helps boost other Oh, ones. that's rad. So, um, that's the idea. And then we have uh, two other beers, an Imperial Kolsch coming out, and then also an Imperial Porter. They're all both called Encourage. And uh, inspire. So Yay! those are all three. Yay. Yeah, Laura. Um, Laura, this is my I have first one thing. time. To, yeah, go I, ahead. Go ahead. I have one thing. Um, so also, I'd like to plug for the entire month of March. This is a Pink Boots thing. Um, all you have to do is text uh, a specific number. I don't have it, but hopefully you can put the link oh, in. in the, yeah, we'll put it on. I do. So, I have it. I have it. I have it. All you have to do is text this number, and they will donate five dollars to Pink Boots Society. That's right. almost a whole burrito, you guys. Yeah, uh, it's through <laughs> almost. Legion. Depends on where you go. Almost. Um, and I think, like within like a matter of a couple of hours, they were they were at like ten thousand dollars. What? Yeah. The entire month. That's so fantastic. Those, we, we just that right there. What Lexi's showing. All um, right. So text. You Legion, can text. You text yep. Pink Boots, P I N K B O O T S, to 78896. There you go. And Pink Boots. We'll also, we'll also put that in the show notes. Six. But, <laughs> but for anybody listening, um, there you go. That's amazing. Uh, and I have to say that we haven't met, you're right. Uh, but I watched the interview you did with my good friend Jeannie. She's a friend of mine. I heard her so much. Jeannie Pacheco. Jeannie yeah. is 
Amazing. And we are actually going to have her on a podcast in the next couple of weeks so that we can talk a little bit more about women in the industry. Jeannie is, um, I, I don't even want to say it here. You tune in for the Jeannie episode because she's Tune in, y'all. Awesome. Tune in. Um, Laura, Laura, thank you so much for everything that you've contributed personally to the organization that thank is you. Pink Boot Society. To tell you the truth, it, it's, it's not even close to being its full potential from what I hear. And it has a lot to do with badasses like yourself. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Amy. Yes, sir. Sorry. <laughs> Anything There's that you want to plug anywhere that, where uh, we can find you? Anything pistol. that you're involved in? Uh, so I am the craft yogi, uh, the craft yogi, all one word, uh, hashtag drink beer, do yoga. Uh, beer education, consulting, and uh, beer yoga, all the good things, uh, beer menu formulations, all that kind of stuff, uh, doing balance series with beers so you don't drop them, so you got to be extra mindful, <laughs> uh, but hashtag drink beer, do yoga at the craft yogi, that's how you can find me. Very cool, and thank you for being a co-leader of the San Diego chapter, one of the big, I mean, the biggest chapter and one of the biggest uh, undertakings for Pink Boots Society as far as it's it, how it's going to continue to flourish. Lex. Yo. Yo, plug. Uh, <laughs> Do some plugs. So uh, you can find uh, Amy and I at Pink Boots San Diego um, on Instagram. Um, I myself am Lexi.Russell.Martin at Instagram. Um, I, like we mentioned several times, I brew for Duckfoot. Uh, we do gluten reduced beer in San Diego here. It's delicious. Um, Jeff can attest to that. I'm sure. And Colby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and if you're interested in other things other than beer, I have a podcast called the dangerous game and we do true crime. Very rad. Kobe, thank you so much for assembling this team. I know that you had uh, the, the biggest part in getting all of these uh, pink boots, uh, the Mount Rushmore of pink boots together for Aww. us to talk about. I, I do think, Shucks. I do think that this is, <laughs> I do think that this is bigger than, than anyone would, would, would particularly uh, at, at a first glance, give it um, as far as it's, importance i guess in the craft beer industry like it, it doesn't seem as though you know, a lot of people don't know the history about it right so the fact that we were able to jump on a show today and you were able to explain everything the ins and outs about pink boots it's phenomenal and i i i, I thank you all for facilitating and and creating a path for women in the craft beer industry and the alcoholic fermented industry uh, at that Thanks to Terry for uh, you know being the innovator on all of this. This is she's the best. Like we explained, every everybody can support pink pink boots by texting that number. They can Aww. buy some hops. You know, Yakima Chief hops donates we, some of the sales yeah. back to pink boots. Yep. Uh, and, um, sponsor pink boots Society. They're always looking for sponsorship of any sort. I mean, it's a nonprofit. Your money is charity. So I challenge, Ooh, yet to I have challenge a steel boot maker out there to make a pink boot and donate proceeds. Yes. As a year round charitable fundraiser. That's my You heard it. You heard it. We're going to we're going to launch that out there. Everybody listening. I just want a pink boot shirt. Kobe looks really good in his. I want a pink boot shirt. We and just I want to Thank you. I, I want I want a pink boot shirt for my daughter. She's going to be four. I would love one for her. Yes. It's oh, custom. That would be cool. It's custom. And um, real quick before, and that's awesome for anybody watching. They just they just sported their new swag. <laughs> um, but before we enter exit and we do a a, a, a cheers, a dedicated to the craft cheers. I'm gonna go down pink boots. P is for passion. I is for integrity and inspiration. N is for networking. K is for knowledge. B is for beer and brewing. O is for opportunity. O is open exchange of ideas. T is for teach. S is for success. Woo. Ladies, thank you so much. Thank you, friends. We appreciate thank it. You. Thanks, Kobe. It was, thank, you for, thank you for thank you for standing for something. <laughs> All right, guys, that was amazing. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, and share the rest of our episodes on uh, Ballast Point's YouTube page, channel, whatever. Uh, you can follow us on ballastpoint.com, Instagram, Facebook. 
all that jam. I'll see you next time. And thanks for tuning in.